So at the moment, nothing's really happening. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and append uh, list items within this uh, un uh, unordered list. So we say timeline ul, and then we say dot append. Now we can just say something like dot append li li, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the proper way, uh, and we're going to create an object which represents a list item like that. So basically, this looks this this basically is a self closing, uh, not a self closing, a a list item start, and then it will end list item. And if I was to do this, let me just pull this down a bit so it's easier to sort of grasp. So we've got um, this here, we've created this object and then inside we can pass different parameters. So I'm going to say here text um, status. So text is the uh, text within this item that we've created. So let's go ahead and refresh and now you can see that we've got three statuses placed in here. Let's go ahead and inspect these just uh, in case you're unsure. So we've got our overall unordered list and within here we've got our opening list item, our closing list item for each one. So it's perfect now that we have uh, you know, done that. We've basically read uh, from an XMR file. We've read a basic node here. Now, there's also other types of data that you can read uh, from XML files. So for example, things like uh, attributes. Now, an attribute will look like this. So most XML files you'll work with will contain attributes. This one only has a few uh, for things like, here we are, URL start and end. Um, and what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace status uh, and insert this ID. So uh, let me just grab this ID here and I'm going to go ahead and do a find in my text editor and a replace. So I'm going to find status and I'm going to replace it with status ID. So replace all and three occurrences, which we would expect. So now for each status node, we've got this ID here which is perfect so we can start to read that. And that's just an example. We don't need to add this in the Twitter timeline because it already exists here. Uh, but in an XML file you're working with, you'll most likely have attributes like this. So I'm going to say var ID. And this is going to be the same. So this, we're referencing the same thing. But this time what we're doing is we're saying dot attribute. And then we say ID. So we're using the jQuery attribute method to read not an attribute in HTML, an HTML document, but in an XML document because it's it works in the same way. So if, for example, um, I was reading an attribute from every div and looking for class, timeline would be returned. But this is the same structure as an XML document. That's effectively what it is. It's just markup. So uh, we're reading this uh, ID attribute and we'll obtain the value automatically from attribute that will return the value for us. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, within brackets, I'm just going to place the ID. So we create a bracket in the string and we append ID and then we, oh, sorry, concatenate another end bracket and then the status. So let's just pop a space after that. So now what we've done is when we refresh, we've read the ID from each of these nodes. So that's how we read attributes uh, as well. Now, the last thing I'm going to touch on is just delving a little deeper into this XML file, because at the moment, what we're doing is we're reading from status, which we're looping through and we're we're grabbing the immediately uh, descending nodes, so the, the, ch uh, the child nodes of this. What we want to do is we might want to get more descendants. So for example, within this user node, within status, we might want to grab the name of the user that's tweeted. So in this case, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to create another selector. Um, and I'll say user. Now we're going to do exactly the same as we did here. So what we're going to do is use a bit of our logical thinking and we're going to find and we're going to find user and then name. So user space name dot text. So then within status, we've read user. So within status, we've read user, then we read name and then we grab the text for it. So it's just a case of looking at it and see, I mean, indentation helps a lot, a, a great deal here when you're when you're looking at these. Um, but, you know, it's just looking at how things uh, sort of descend into each other. So in this case, I'm going to pop at the end of the status, a hyphen and then user. So uh, let's go ahead to the browser and refresh. And you can now see that at the end of the status, we have 
PHP Academy at the end of each one. That's the user that we're reading from. Great, so um, I'll quickly uh, actually touch on looping within uh, these statuses. So for example, within a status, um, you may have something like, uh, well, let's just make something up. I'm just gonna say link and link. And in here, I'm just gonna put a link. So perhaps google.com. And then I'm gonna copy this, well, let's say three times. And let's change this very slightly each time. Cool. So now we've got this problem where within status, we've got three of the same uh, named nodes. So if we were to say status.link, then you know what's gonna happen? Let's take a look. So I'm gonna say var link is equal to this, or we append the value. Uh, we're gonna say f uh, find link dot text cool so first of all let's just place this for every status so let's just go down and place this in and down again and place this under here cool so let's go ahead and uh, refresh here now ah, we want to go ahead and output it I guess so at the end of here I'll just put link lovely so uh, when I refresh now we get uh, all three of these nodes have been processed and then output so this is very clever and it's also very useful and what it means is we don't need to loop through these inner nodes that contain the same node name uh, and then go ahead and output these but what happens if we want a specific one so what happens if we want the first one well, in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use selectors to select which one we want. So you might have come across nth child in CSS. What we can do is we can specify this. So this is a pseudo selector and we're selecting the first child. Now this is indexed at one. So one in this case will represent this, two will represent this and three will represent this. So if we want to just get the first link, for example, or even the second or third, uh, we can go ahead and refresh. And there we go, we just get the first link returned. Now, if you wanted to process each one separately, what you would do is you would do an, a loop within here and you would loop through this dot find link and then you could process each one. So I'll just give you a quick example of that. Uh, so for example, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this entirely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and alert them out because I'm running out of mar uh, space in my markup. Um, so what we could do here is we could say uh, this, dot find link dot each function and you would normally just go ahead and process each of the links here within the loop because you might want to say format them in a special way or use them you know different places or whatever uh, in this case though I'm just going to go ahead and alert out link uh, sorry alert this dot text cool so let's go ahead and refresh that and here we get google.com google.co.uk google.ca uh, so that process is for each one um, in this case you'll see that we've got an error down here so if I go ahead and hit this uh, it says link is not defined on line 16 uh, and the problem here is that we're just referencing a variable that doesn't exist at the moment so if we go ahead and just get rid of this then when we refresh, we get google.com, google.co.uk, google.ca, and then that one appears, and then we're looping through again and outputting them. And obviously, again, you wouldn't you wouldn't alert them, but that was just an example. So that's a short guide on how to read XML files with uh, jQuery. There are obviously a lot more uh, complicated XML files that you can loop through, but generally for basic use, this is enough to loop through and grab the data you need from any XML file.